Well, hey, remember in the, the movie uh, The Wizard of Oz when the guy's like, pay no attention to the guy behind the curtain? I'm going to ask that of you today. If you see people moving around back here, pay no attention to the people behind the pastor. They're getting set up for Saturday Night Live here, so don't worry about them. Just, you know, dial in, work with me. We're going to start first with kids' questions for this week as we dive in to groups content. All right, kids, we're starting off with you, so I want you to do me a favor. Think back to the story I talked about this weekend where I talked about two MSU fans getting tickets and sitting right in the middle of the Wolverine student section at a football game and how isolated they would feel. Do me a favor. Ask yourself, what, well, just kind of tell the audience, the, the, the audience, the, the group you're with, would it be your worst nightmare to be in that situation? Would you find your seats? See where they're at and just be like, yeah, we're out of here and leave. Or would you stick it out, get into the middle of the madness, and cheer loudly for your Spartans, even though you're in the heart of the Wolverine student section? Which one would you do and why? Jesus said to the church in Pergamum, I know um, where you live, where Satan has his throne, yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me. The church in Pergamum was very much like those two Sparty students in the middle of the Wolverine student section, right? They were right in the heart of it. And trust me, I'm not saying one of these teams is good or bad. What I'm saying is look at how the church stood firm even though they were surrounded by sin. Question number one, has there been a time in your life where you felt like you were alone because of your faith? Question number two, have you ever joined the crowd because it was easier and then regretted it? What was that moment like? If you feel comfortable sharing with the group, share about that. And what would you do differently if you could do it differently today? And finally, question number three. Do you have friends surrounding you that can help you stand firm in what you believe? Do you have a friend group that supports you? If you don't, who can you ask to help hold you accountable so that you stand firm even though you're in a culture that seems to openly despise God? Kids, thanks for joining us. We hope you have a great time at groups. Thanks for answering the questions and have a good evening. We'll talk to you guys soon. All right, grown-ups, here come your questions. Buckle up. This is a good week. This is some tough conversation. I hope you guys dig in and have a good conversation. In this text, remember we talk about uh, the church in Pergamum living in a place where Satan has his throne. So they're in a culture that's surrounded by, well, the church is surrounded by the culture and trying to kind of affect it and change it. So let me be honest. I fear a life like the church in Pergamum has to live. If I'm honest, um, I much prefer comfort and happiness and, um, and probably easier days than the hard days. I, I fear the kind of life Pergamum had to live. But I do also know this, that some of my, well, all of my deepest and best spiritual maturing and growth did not come on the easy days. They came on the days where I had to develop the spiritual muscle to stand firm in my faith and have nothing but Jesus Christ. Here's question number one. What are some of the most difficult times that you have experienced as a believer. And what did you um, hold on to to get through those times? Was it a scripture, a word of God, uh, maybe from scripture, or a word of God uh, from a friend? Was it a hymn or a worship song? Take some time and share with your group. What was that season and what saw you through it?
Question number two, the teaching of Balaam. Did anyone else read the, the line in this past week uh, about Balaam? You know, you read that line in the scripture and you Google it only to find out that he's the guy from the book of Judges whose donkey talked to him. Anybody else? Be like, oh yeah, that happened. So Balaam, why do you think, think back to this week's teaching, that they had this church had to repent of of holding on to the teachings of Balaam. And what things have snuck into your life that, well, you know they're wrong, yet you hold on to them, even when you know they're wrong. So take a minute and answer those two. Why do you think they had to repent of holding on to his teachings and what has snuck into your life? Question three, we know that Balaam, uh, the spirit of Balaam, sneaks into the back door of our life and wreaks havoc. How do you guard the back door of your life from having false teachings, teachers, or influencers? Part two to that question is, have you ever been enjoying something like a podcast, a book, or I don't know, some lecture or something, or, or just a show, only to realize that all the great material you're hearing is actually dangerous to your faith? It actually subtly undermines your faith. How did you respond once you realized what was happening through that podcast, that teaching, or that influencer? In the Digging Deeper section this week, I really like what's going on in it. If you have a chance as a group, spend some time in that and wrestle with it. If you only have time individually, I would encourage you to spend some time there because the reality is um, as we challenge ourselves deeper into the faith and we open up, what we find is the growth that comes out of it bears that spiritual fruit that the world looks at and sees. It's uniquely different from the spirit of this world. It's the, the fruit that grows out of the life of a Christian. So take some time, if you can, jump in to digging deeper. If you can't and your time is up because you are all too chatty, that's actually really good too because groups are meant to be a place for you to connect, to know each other, love each other, spend some time praying for each other and be blessed as you go about your week. Weeks. Thanks for joining us in groups here at the Foundry Church this week. Deuces, we're out.